Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick breakdown of the Phillies sticking it up again against the New York Mets, as they were only able to play good in, well, most of one game, and then fall in the end, and then could in the second game of the series after the two postponements to actually be able to get the win as Kyle Gibson again pitched a very good performance, having a very solid start to the season for Gibson for the Phillies. Now, in the first game of the series, of course, Aaron Nola pitched absolutely lights out through seven innings and came out with, let's see here, 101 pitches and only gave up a hit and had seven Ks. And then Familia came in and pitched great. James Norwood came in and pitched poor. I have to eat crow with him. He started off the season well in his first few outings, and now it's been really bad. But I, but I mean, maybe he can get bouncing back going. I thought he might have been one of those good depth pickups like Bilotti, but unlike Bilotti staying more on track, Norwood has gone south, but it's still early in a marathon season, so he could get going north back in the right direction right again soon. But then Knebel got put into an awful spot by James Norwood. Still no excuse. Corey Knebel obviously owned it and um, should have still got the save there, but uh, he was put into a basically hellhound spot by James Norwood there, and he has to be able to pitch better with a massive lead in that ninth inning. I mean, that's that was inexcusable to give up all of those runs back. You can't be doing that. They had one run in the first eight innings and then scored all of those to beat you in the ninth inning. That's inexcusable. We can't let seven runs in the ninth inning. That was terrible by the Phillies bullpen in that game. <clears throat> and that's been the issue with the team. There's been a lot of inconsistencies this year, and that's what's beat this team down to be seven games back, four and six in the last ten. Miami sucked in the last ten, too. They're three and seven, and then Atlanta's been even. But the Mets are running away with this division because the whole division has had inconsistencies in different orders, where for the Phillies, it's been the nights they are able to hit the bullpen falters. The nights they're able to starting pitch and hit the bullpen falters. Or maybe the starting pitch doesn't do great, but the bullpen does great, and then the hitting's not able to pick it up after that. There's just different things that lead to the inconsistencies this year as they have to try to ring it in against the Seattle Mariners team that they're playing this evening who are around the same as them, have had inconsistencies, and there's been similarities. I talked about that with Alex Clark, who covers the Mariners for a podcast he does and has on, been on Seattle Radio in the past before he's got other jobs, where I talked about that with him where we've made some comparables that both teams have had different ways of waves and tides of inconsistencies this year. But the Mariners are the much better overall fielding team than the Phillies on top of the ability to still... They don't have the same lineup as the Phillies, but the ability to pick it better and potentially pitch it better than the Phillies most likely, if not at least as good... That's, that's at very least an even series on paper coming in, if not a little bit of a benefit to the Mariners, but I'll talk about that in the series preview uh, I do coming up later. But when it comes to this series, the the Phillies sucked up the joint in the ninth inning, and that's what got them down. Their offense did their job in game one. I mean, you score seven runs, you go up seven to one. You can't blame that game on the offense. The offense was able to do their job. Did they score patch runs again? Sure, they scored in the first two and scored in the fourth, and didn't score any more later, but they shouldn't have to add on when they're up freaking 7-1. to one. Their bullpen really blew that game. And then in Game 2, again, Knable bounced back, got the save. That was huge to see. Got his fifth save. And the hugest thing to see in that game was beating Max Scherzer out of the game. Um, that was big for the Phillies. Harper hit a home run and a single to get him out of the game. And then Stott coming back up after being hot with the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, who got off to a very good start and are still off to a good start. Well, the, actually, their start was... A little inconsistent and then got on a rampant hot streak after a few inconsistent few games to start the season which is fantastic to see for the pigs and he was a big part of that but obviously they are still kicking it down there and I got to get up there to go to a game soon but Stott hits an opposite field single McCann is able to then ground out to get a run and then of course Frenchie Lindor hit that big double that then brought them back into the game in the sixth inning but the Phillies in this game for how bad their bullpen was the night before. After Gibson pitched six, they were able to really step up in this game, as Dominguez did great, who has had a good overall season. Alvarado's did great, who's had a good overall season. Both have had rough patches in games, but that's because both are not always the biggest control artists, but um, they obviously have the freakishly great stuff. And then Knable was able to bounce back and get a save in this one. And then we move into when it comes to the New York Mets the second game 
of that day, which was the exact opposite for the Phillies. The Phillies had a great start, obviously with Christopher Sanchez on the mound, who's more of a long reliever than anything. He's not a starter at the big league level. Um, he's a guy that wasn't able to give you much in this. He, he gave you two and a third, gave up two runs. Nelson came in and had a bad outing. He's been a guy that's been able to eat up some innings for you. This was not a sharp outing for him. Bellotti came in and also didn't have one of his sharpest outings. And then Brogdon came in and pitched good for you, so that's good to see Brogdon be able to come down and pitch good, but it was also in some garbage time at that point. And then Hand came in and pitched good, and then Norwood also bounced back from his awful first game against the Mets. So it was good to see him, but also, again, that was in garbage time to see Brogdon pitch well and Norwood pitch good, but you got to put it in perspective since it was kind of in garbage time. But the Phillies, their lineup didn't do enough um, after the first game. They scored three runs, obviously, in the second game early in the game, didn't add on, and the pitching was really what won them that game because they were able to bounce back from the bad finish from Norwood and Knable being put in a tough spot in Game 1 and get it going and pitch great in Game 2. And then in Game 3, nothing was going for the Phillies, as obviously you wanted to see in the second game of the doubleheader, the offense be able to pick it up for Sanchez, as they talked about in that pregame as well, but nothing was to be for the offense in that game off of Chris Bassett, who obviously the A's during his time there really got him clicking into one of the better pitchers and then the American League, and now he's come to the National League and is pitching as one of the better pitchers in the National League. This has been a reaction to the Phillies versus Mets series is for the second time this season, the Phillies get beat by the Mets in a series as they pull ahead even more in the division at this point as it's now a seven-game lead over a Phils and six over the Marlins and the Braves and then the Nationals are just out there. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.